So I've got another brake job to do. This is on the Yukon. This is the rear. It's a little while ago I did the front. I think I made a video on that. So it should be up here. I never remember which direction to point because it's always backwards, but somewhere up here there'll be a video. Brake jobs are, are a common thing. Brakes wear out. They're, they're a consumable item. And they're actually really easy to do. And they're really overpriced to get done. So I have uh, actually don't even, couldn't even tell you for sure what it costs to get a brake job done. I haven't paid for a brake job uh, actually my entire life. So I don't know. They're relatively simple. On these Denali versions, I, and it may be true of the other models of Yukon Tahoe as well, they have uh, the later models. This is a 14. The later models have a electronic e-brake, uh, parking brake. And that can add some steps to this. I haven't done one of those yet, actually. So I don't know exactly what those are. So check your, check your manual and, and see. But uh, other than that, the changing pads is the same. Like, it's just the same. There's a caliper that squeezes. Got a piston or two or four. Like, it depends on the vehicle and the performance of the vehicle. Some of them have bigger calipers with more pistons. But they're still... A thing on the inside that compresses the pads together and just like you know brakes on your bike or whatever just squeezes this rotor and pinches it until it stops so you just take that caliper off take the old pads out put new pads in now it's a self-adjusting so when you step on that brake pedal over time as it wears out it's going to continue to to squeeze and then back off just a little and squeeze and back off just a little so because the pads are so thin it won't fit now so you have to compress that cylinder back in and that's usually fairly easy, especially on rear brakes. The front brakes on some of these vehicles are, because that's actually more of your stopping power is in the front. They tend to be a little beefier. Rear brakes, this looks like a pretty small caliper. It probably could do it with just a, a, a brake kit. You can do it, I'll show you when we get there, but you can do it with a clamp or you can do it with uh, one of these kits that I have. You can get the kit for, for free, rent it from your local parts store. Typically, if you find one that's got the rental options and makes short work of this. So this is pretty quick. Uh, the rotors are good, so I'm not gonna touch the rotors. We're just gonna do the pads. So this shouldn't take very long, so we'll get after it. You got two bolts, one here, one down here. These are 13 millimeter I believe yep and you want to take off I find anyway it's easier it doesn't always matter but if in the case especially the ones that have the bolt that goes all the way through this one only goes to right here so it's gonna be a little short bolt this is basically the nut is this piece right here uh, but some of them are threaded all the way down into this into this uh, housing so you uh, you want to take off, so in this case, because we're loosening them, it's going to loosen up, right? It's going to go, the wrench is going to go this way. And so I'm going to do the top one first on this side. So I'm always working to push this all towards the wheel because if I do the bottom one first, then when I try to do the top one, what can sometimes happen is it'll rotate up, or especially on the other side, it'll rotate out and down. And it just makes it hard to get the get the bolt out. So I just do the one that whatever in order so that I'm pushing the pad towards the wheel always. So in this case I'm gonna go up. But usually I'm pretty pretty loose. Now you can see how it's turning here. So sometimes when you have a nut like this one, you'll have to grab another wrench just to hold that. One, that one's down here, somewhere. And this should just slide right off. Should. Sometimes it needs a little help. There. Yep, so single piston here. Don't let this dangle like that. So on this one, you can just, there's plenty of space up here. You can prop it up. You can get like a coat hanger or a piece of 
wire, like a Romex wire. Just one, the hard, the single stranded wire and just wrap around something and wrap it through one of those screw holes just to hang it on something so it isn't hanging by that brake hose. And then these should just slide out. Oh, there's a little, little catch on this one. Right here and right here. You can reuse these here, but almost always you get good pads. They almost always come with new springs. Well, this is what happens when you say something's easy, I guess. Turns out to not be as easy as you hoped. There. Yeah, see, there's not, not much pad left on these. The back one's gonna be the same. There it goes. So even for a big vehicle, right? These brakes aren't super huge. Some of them, they can be real long. Old pad, new pad. How much thicker they are. So that was about done for. These have this little bar on them. This one has it too. And we'll call it like a squealer bar. And when the pad wears to the point where that bar touches the rotor, it'll squeal. That gives you that indicator like, time to replace them. And that's like, time to replace them about now. I mean, there's not much pad after that. And then you got this metal cast plate on here and it starts to grind into this and then you end up having to replace your rotors and these rotors ain't cheap so stay on top of your brake pads because these pads are a lot cheaper than new rotors these pads were 60 these are the higher end pads these are 65 dollars something like that 60 bucks i don't know i'll put a link to them but um for the ac delco and for up for for both wheels these are about 120 bucks each so you want to don't want to have to replace your rotors if you don't have to. By the way, if you go to a brake shop, they'll almost always make you do your rotors, even though you don't always really need them. And that's one of those where good if you can do it on your own because then you don't have to pay that fee. Usually these just pop right out. They don't really give you much grief. Every once in a while, they can be a little bit tricky, a little bit temperamental, especially if they're a little rusty or bent or... Um, if you get new ones, it's generally a pretty good idea to replace them uh, because they aren't that hard to replace. And if you don't replace them and then one breaks later, it can cause some weird wear, some noise. So, you know, it was 30 seconds, just do it. I do put brake lubricant on. Do not use anti-seize. It's not the same thing. You don't have to do this. I did brakes for a long, long time. I, I was probably my, I don't know, we're in the, in the hundreds of brake jobs. And for the first, you know, 15 years of my adulthood replacing, you know, teenager adulthood replacing brakes, I never put this stuff on. I didn't really understand the value of it. But it is helpful to keep the noise down. And you just do the back sides of the pads don't do the front of the pad, just the back side. I also put it on these little cylinders. You can see it's got some on there now. And because these flex inside this housing, inside the bracket, and you wanna make sure that they continue to flex. So I'll redo those as well. And you don't need very much. In fact, you really use very little. There's not always an inner and outer front back. Sometimes they're just the same. You just put one in front, one on the back. You do want to make sure if you have the, with the little squealer bars tabs on here, there's no reason to put two squealer tabs on one wheel and they don't have one for the other wheel. So make sure you're offsetting those. But these actually are labeled inner and outer. So we'll follow that. We'll do the outer there. Better to put the brake grease on after, <laughs> after you put the pad on because they get slippery. Now I will also lube up these. I'll wipe off the old lube. Just throw a little bit on. You don't need a lot. You can overdo it. And then they won't want to stay in there. They want to pop back out too much. Oh, no, no, clean that one off first. Just give it a nice even layer, as much as you can. Oops. Try not to pop your sleeve back in. There. 
guys. That was just a little too much. School's out there a little bit. Okay, so now we gotta squeeze that caliper back in. Okay, so this is that brake kit I was talking about. Get where you can see it. And it just has a bunch of these different plates that connect to the, um, to the caliper, to the piston. Some of them you have to rotate back, some you just push back. Uh, this one you just have to push back. So you just get one of these here, this plate, and use an old one of the old pads, push it up against there, and just crank it back. You can use a pad and a big C-clamp, um, and some of the real small cars, like I had a little Saturn, I can just push it with my thumbs. Where'd the little pad go? So anyway, we'll get one of these out, get this out. And then we just need, it doesn't matter in this case, any of, the, any of these plates will work. Just something that's gonna be flat. Push against that pad. Okay, once you get it in here, this, this threads like in, it's kind of a weird backwards thread. As you thread this, this threads out, that threads in, pushes that back. It can be rather tough to do on some cars. You do not have to crack the bleeder. You don't have to bleed the brakes if you do it this way. As long as no air gets in there. So if nothing, there's no place for the fluid to come out, there's no place for the air to go in. So you don't have to re-bleed the brakes. That's not what people tell you. This one's not that hard. If they get real hard, like multi-piston brakes, you can uh, pop the cap on the brake reservoir and that'll give you a little bit of, of uh, pressure release. And, um, and then that'll help a little bit, but this isn't too bad. This actually is going super easy. Like I said, a lot of times rear brakes aren't that bad. So go all the way until it won't go anymore. Like really f just bury that piston down inside there. I'm gonna back it all the way back out because I'm gonna do the other side. So I might as well back it out while I'm in here. You don't usually, because there's enough friction on it, have to put a wrench on this, but if not, then you can do that. And then it should just slide back on. That's it. Put our bolts back in. You just gotta line it back up. It's like anything else. You don't need nut and bolt. They can cross thread. So you want to make sure it threads in nice and easy. There it goes. Before you torque on it. Once you get both of them just hand tightened, it doesn't matter what order you do those in. Like when I took them off, because it's gonna hold. These don't have to be super tight. Just get them snugged. Remember see how easy they came out because they're not really holding anything of any kind of pressure. Snugged up and then just kind of one, one push. One, as a friend of mine said, one ooga booga. So then we just got to do the same thing on the other side, but that's how you change your brake pads. Like I said, this is probably, this took 15 minutes. Once you're done, you drop back on the ground, you go for a little drive, and as you pump the brakes, it'll, it'll, self-adjust and, and reset back to a good a good snug brake so you can do it just start the car you know hit your brakes a couple times pump them that'll get them set and then you know back up the driveway and back and you know, come back in the garage and you're good to go brakes that's it can be a little dirty maybe you want to wear some gloves if you watch many of my videos you know i don't really i'm not a big fan of gloves so i don't do that much but uh you know just some hand cleaner will work just fine so you can save yourself a ton of money right? Like brake jobs are expensive. I don't know why other than I think they prey on people's fear a little bit. And, I, and I'm not saying every shop is like that. I've seen some that actually advertise themselves as being not that like they just, I'll just, we'll just do your pads. We'll just do whatever. Right. And, and so if you have a shop like that, then by all means throw some business their way because those are the good guys in this market, but there's a lot of bad ones. There's a lot of shysters out there that like to take advantage of people that are afraid about their brakes. So one of my big pet peeves is the amount of money that gets that, that people get charged for brake jobs. They're not terribly difficult. 
uh, small amount of mechanical ability and some basic tools crescent wrench and a 13 millimeter socket and even then I could have done it with a 13 millimeter wrench or another crescent wrench uh, you don't need one of these kits you can do it with a clamp but the kit does make it a lot easier and you don't even have to buy the kit I just do enough of them that I bought a kit but we do a lot of we put a lot of miles on this thing and it goes through a lot of breaks so I do I do you know I bought with these kits it was like 25 30 bucks it wasn't that expensive but you don't have to spend that either you can just borrow it rent it from your local part store O'Reilly Advance, yada yada, AutoZone, they all do it. So if you've got one nearby you, just go over and say you want a brake, brake caliper kit, they'll, you'll pay a deposit and you get your deposit back when you take it back. So not that big a deal. Yeah, another brake job done. Saved yourself a few hundred bucks. This was, I think it cost me, uh, I think it was $65 total. So that's, you know, and an hour's worth of time to jack it up, get the wheel off, Change the brakes, put the wheel back on. That's about what it's going to take me. As always, I hope you, ha hope you get something out of this. Good luck on your job, and um, we'll see you next time.